morning and welcome to what is going to be a, a pretty quick rushed probably morning tarot. The reason for this is that um, I work slightly different time in the morning week on week off so last week I was starting at 9am this week I'm starting at 8am and it's currently 7.42am <laughs> so I've literally got one take to do this and then set it off uploading and I have to get straight out to work. Um, uh, <laughs> the pressure <laughs> not to forget something, so I might very well forget something, um, and you can just video response and put your opinions in. Um, actually, before I get on with the video, I'm going to just say, I've decided that I'm going to uh, disable the ratings for these tarot videos. Um, I always leave ratings open on my videos, uh, people can thumbs up, thumbs down, but that's what they're for, I don't really mind, um, I often don't notice, what I have noticed though is on a couple of the tarot videos I've done, people have thumbs down, but no one's commented, and so, like, the thumbs and eyes just don't like me, or they're just like not because I'm doing tarot videos instead of um, like how to's or whatever. Um, but I was thinking, you know, very likely it's people watching the videos and thinking, you know, I don't agree with you, or no, you're doing that wrong. That's completely not the um, interpretation. Now, obviously, I follow kind of intuitive tarot, so I don't really think there is a wrong. Um, I think as long as you have the interpretation that works for you and it makes for good reading, that's what's important. So I really want to encourage people um, who don't like these videos, who don't like my interpretation please do a video response um, or, or something and let me know what your interpretation is because we can all like learn from each other and if you have a different deck and things so I'm going to disable the comments just because I'm hoping that that means that anybody who actually has like something to say about the cards will come forward and say it because that would just be amazing. Okay, I'm setting off with cups. I decided to do cups after the swords. So I went through the swords, the air, all these kind of challenges and difficulties, I feel like I'm peering around the card, challenges and difficulties and sort of situations that we encounter in our lives um, and cups are represented by uh, water, so they're kind of representative of water signs and they're representative of emotion, emotional situations and kind of problems and situations that come within from a sort of an emotional level as opposed to kind of situations that might come in from a more mental perspective and uh, not that they don't cross over because obviously they do. Um, and there's also, some of these are, you know, a little bit nicer, gentler cards than, um, at least on the surface, than the swords. So I thought we'll make a nice contrast to go in and do cups. So we'll start off with the two of cups here. Um, I'm probably actually, was going to do two, three and four. I might just do two and three now because I'm so conscious of the time. I've got to get to work. Focus. Okay, two of cups. So the two of cups looking at the cards um i think there can't really be very much doubts in people's mind when they see this card this is a card that represents union it represents love it represents bonding it represents coming together of things um to itself numerology wise uh, being a number of unity and balance uh, male and female yin and yang um, and different energies coming together to create that balance and create the partnership and the harmony and here we have very strong symbols of harmony and um, we have kind of the oops <laughs> kind of the symbol that is actually used to represent you know two the coming together of things um, the winged lion this image of sort of strength uh, and and protection uh, stretched out over the top of the people here um, and I think always think this looks a bit like a hand fasting kind of ceremony myself you've got the woman in her kind of robes and she wears the colours of the priestess, the high priestess and we will discuss that when we look at the major arcana but she's almost representative of the high priestess figure whilst the male here is wearing colours that are similar to the magician and um, the magician and the high priestess are very much, they are card number one and card number two in the major arcana and they represent very much in the numerology sense which we'll get into later the values of those two numbers and this is almost like a, a union of the kind of younger masculine and feminine energies and bringing together. So this can very much be a card that talks about romantic love, romantic partnerships, um, relationships, marriages even, um, people coming together. It's a very fortunate card. It means uh, a card of, of emotional good fortune, emotional bonding. It doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, though I do feel there is often very much a romantic air about this card, but it can just be um, connecting with another person on a very deep level, having a kind of very deep bond with somebody and strengthening those bonds. 
uh, for me, this this will always be very much a relationship card and a love card. It's extremely lucky. It's an extremely nice card to have. It's very balanced. So if you're looking at a relationship or any kind of partnership and pairing, if you think this card, you're looking at something that's very much either a meeting of minds, a meeting of hearts. It's like a soulmate card. This is the soulmate card. Um, and it's a complete balance of energies between two people and people are really very much in sync. Uh, it's very beautiful, very beautiful card. Some of the nicest cards. Oh, how am I doing? Oh, five minutes. Okay, not too long. I'm quite, I might do, maybe I'll do number four after all. Moving on to the Three of Cups. Now, the Three of Cups, I think, is just it's a really amazing card to look at because when you look at this card, you're looking at celebration. And the cups often do have a really kind of party, sort of um, celebrating happy, joyous, my cup is overflowing kind of feel to it. And here we're looking at three women. These um, can actually be considered to be representative of a trinity. So for example, Maze and Mother Crone, um, the three fates, past, present and future, or dancing together. I often think of the three fates when I look at this card. I think of a kind of a a situation where you've got the, the past and the present and the future all coming together and this often makes me think of family gatherings because I see this kind of socialness and this kind of almost like party atmosphere that's going on the food and the drink and the dancing and this idea of trinity of the fates past present and future so this one makes me think of gatherings um especially family gatherings or places where you have several different generations in one room bringing together friends or people that maybe haven't seen each other for a, a long time all coming together in one place in a quite a celebratory fashion whether it's to celebrate a graduation or a party or um, a wedding or just a meetup, so I often think there's a lot of um, the vibe of a very social event, a very social occasion coming through with this. Um, and looking at the colours, you've got sort of one of the ladies wearing the kind of the traditional virginal white, the maiden white. Um, you know, we've got the kind of the red of the mother, um, this lady who's not wearing the kind of the black of the crone, but that just strengthens that kind of feeling of someone going through patterns of life and I think that also because of that this can actually herald especially if you're reading for a woman because I feel there's a very female energy about this card it can sort of herald a time um, when somebody is perhaps going through one of those transition phases where you're going kind of from maiden to mother and I say mother kind of the middle of life mother to crone or you're looking back at those phases so I think that this can be kind of a reminder to celebrate the transitions in life and to celebrate getting older and to celebrate sort of going from one phase to the next. Um, there is also another little association that does come with this card I've heard other people mention this as well is occasionally this card can be and it's quite rare but it can be indicative of a pregnancy as well real feminine energy to it such a uh, the energy of that card is so wonderful and celebratory should I do the next one yeah go on then okay as I'm, as I'm going and I'm talking I'm just going to uh, finish off I've got 10 minutes what I need to do is get my shoes on and walk downstairs I'm sure I'll be fine okay so moving on the four of cups and this is very different energy um, in a way to the other so here we were looking at sort of the two with this kind of beautiful love and soulmate and union and partnership and balance and harmony. The three, this kind of atmosphere of parties and gatherings and celebrations and celebrating yourself and the feminine aspect and the, uh, the fates and all those kinds of things. And now suddenly we're looking at the four of cups here. You know, I haven't changed the auto focus on this. It's like it's focusing in and out. I normally just set it because it's annoying if it keeps focusing out. So if I can get to focus on the card. No, I'm just wasting, it's just dead air now, isn't it? Okay, so the Four of Cups um, is a very different kind of energy to the predecessor card. Um, this is a card that, to me, makes me think of being in a situation where you've got to make a decision, you've got to make a choice, or you've got to do something, and you're feeling a little bit sullen about it, and you just don't know what to do. Um, so you're just sitting and looking at your options and you're either unable to see that one is better than the other or you're unwilling to you don't want to make a decision and you're just feeling kind of sullen if you look at the chap here i mean he's sitting there under the tree he, he, you can't really see his face very well because the camera's focused out but he's got quite a confused look on his face arms folded 
legs crossed. You know, he's feeling quite surly. He's sort of feeling quite protective of himself and he's not happy about this. And he's just sitting under the tree and he's staring at these three cups. Should I have A, B or C? Should I go this way? Should I go this way? Should I go this way? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? And often I think when we're presented with a situation where we have to make um, choices and decisions or we're presented with a series of options, um, but we don't really want any of them, <laughs> we don't want to have to change things, um, then you just, you can get into that situation where you're just like, I don't care, you become apathetic, you refuse to make a choice, or maybe you're just confused and you're like, I, I just don't know what to do. Uh, and often it's because you're looking at those things, it's like you're waiting for something else. None of those things seem exactly right. Nothing of those sort of choices or options or directions to go in really reflect what you would like to do or they don't excite you, they don't motivate you and so you don't really feel inclined to do anything about them. But well, if you're just sitting here waiting <laughs> under the tree, if you're refusing to do anything and you're just kind of downing tools and saying, that's it, I'm not doing anything, I've had enough, a mini fit, um, then you're not going to pr make any progress. Eventually you do have to make a decision. The interesting the thing about this card is I think that there is usually this is like almost a mini version of um, an ace card because it's got the hand coming in, almost the hand of the, the divine coming in and offering something. And so what it says to me is this is somebody who's in a situation where they're looking at weighing up them, looking at choices and options and things that they could do, uh, the things that they could choose, um, and they are ignoring or they are failing to see the best option. And this here is, is the best option. It's the best choice. It's kind of the dream thing. And for whatever reason, this person... Um, is ignoring it or failing to see it. It doesn't always have to be like the best option, <laughs> like you know, your, your dream or ideal situation is there and you're just not seeing it. Sometimes it also means that you know what you have to do and you're refusing to look at it. You're trying to look, is it desperately, yeah, can I do something else? Can I do something else? How do I get out of this situation? How do I change it? Can I do something else? But there's a knowledge that you know, you know what you need to do. And so this can be about intuition as well, saying, you know, you know what you need to do. You need to um, accept that and look at it. Or someone who is struggling to make decisions and make choices or kind of make a move, as it were, um, is refusing or is unable for whatever reason to see that the you know the best option is right there next to them. So they need to kind of snap out of this funk they're in and see that um, the option that they're looking for, you know, the best choice is not far away. They just need to open their eyes and be open to it coming into their lives. Okay, I better go. Got to run, got to go to work. Have a lovely Monday, everybody, and I will see you soon. Bye.